So I think there's a fairly good possibility that this is the start of our birth vlog. We will see. I have been having contractions all day that were like five to seven minutes apart. Um, and it felt like they were getting stronger. Um, but I've been having Braxton Hicks and like this prodromal labor stuff I've had with all three of my pregnancies. So you never know when it's actually going to do something. But it has felt stronger the past few days. And then we came home tonight and I have been kind of looking at the clock a little bit which I hadn't been at all the past few days even as they were getting closer together just because of past experiences it hasn't really done anything and escalated into anything but because I keep having them I decided to go ahead and start watching the clock and it seemed like they were five to seven minutes apart every time I checked for the last few hours so I came home and laid down and was laying in bed falling asleep when I felt like a big pop and it felt different so I waited to see if like any water came out or anything stood up nothing came out and went to the bathroom and then went and made a bowl of cereal that I was going to eat and sat down and then some water came out not like a huge huge gush but a good amount and then now I've been walking around since then and it keeps coming out so pretty sure at this point it's my water I don't know what else it would be um but my mom is on her way over to stay with the kids we're gonna go to the hospital and get it checked out. It's definitely, the contractions have been closer together since that happened and stronger. So we shall see what happens, but that's the update for you at the moment. Okay, we're in the car on the way to the hospital. I think my water broke around 10, maybe a few minutes after and it's 10.56 now. My contractions are like two minutes apart or so. I'm definitely getting stronger. So we'll see what they say. We need something going on here. I'm okay. Well, she is. Let's get this going. She is pushing the baby out. Let's make something happen. You need a wheelchair? Are you She is. The baby's coming. I'm telling you. Delivered twice now, and there's seven minutes from when she starts. Alrighty. Um, any 
Well, it might be your most dramatic interest. So. That is for sure. <laughs> Although it sounds like none of your babies wanted to wait too no. no. long. So. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You're going to be excited to meet your little, or your big siblings, your big brother and your big sister. Your big brother's going to hug you over and over and over and over. Your sister won't put you down. What's going to happen? Yeah. They're going to give you lots of grief. They're going to take your toys away. But push come to shove, they take care of you, I promise. Mm -hmm. They have big hearts. You gotta be my spy on the inside. Tell me what they're getting into all the time. They're too close in age. <clears throat> they act like twins sometimes. Okay? Alright? You recognize my voice? No? Ready? Artsy look. Artsy look, artsy look. Oh my Lanta. Look at that girl. She's so cute. She looks like sister of Angela. So, quick update. Baby is here. Let's see if we can see her. Right over there. We got transferred to our postpartum room. It was wild. My wildest birth by far, so I'll have to share more about that tomorrow. It was very fast, very fast, and we are doing well though, so we are going to try to get a little bit of sleep. I'm gonna try and feed her one more time, and then hopefully get a few hours of sleep. It is 2.42 a.m. now, so, and she was born at 11.20, so we're gonna get settled and try and get a little bit of sleep. Welcome, guys. This is Sitting with the Molinas. This is how this one came to be. Oh my. Da, da, da. She was asleep in the bassinet, so we were just going to record her birth story because we obviously wanted to do a birth vlog, and I recorded a couple clips, and Matt thankfully did record, but it was so fast that you can't see everything happening, and we thought we should sit down and probably talk through it because it just got really wild really quick. So we're going to do that real quick before really we forget quick. all the details. Because that's. But, it's not that long. To give you a little bit of backstory first, um, so she was born at 11.20 p.m. on mm -hmm. Wednesday, February 15th. Mm -hmm. So all day that day, I had had contractions like five to seven minutes apart all day. But with all three of my kids, I've had prodromal labor, so I have consistent contractions like that constantly for weeks before I deliver and with the other two I was induced. I have never gone into labor naturally until Payson. So um, didn't really think that much about it. I did notice that they never, like usually throughout the day at some point if I laid down or something they would kind of fade out a little bit and then they would come back. Um, and they didn't ever fade out but they weren't, like I was just doing normal life. We went to the mall, we walked around because I was trying to walk like a couple miles. We, um, I don't know, I cleaned around the house, I did some sourdough stuff like we just did all our regular things and we even went over we had a valentine's day dinner at my family's that evening um so we left my family's house at like 8 30 went home got the kids in bed like probably a little after nine and then i was sitting in bed and watching a tv show and matt went out to the living room to play a video game for a little bit and he fell asleep on the couch and I was falling asleep in the room and I was noticing I was still having the contractions, but I wasn't like they weren't really, I mean, I, I had told Matt like they were consistent all day. So I did notice that. And they were definitely getting like stronger in general than they had been a few weeks before, but nothing that I was having to like breathe through or that I couldn't do normal life through at all. And I was laying in bed, um, falling asleep and heard like a little pop twice. And I had heard other people say that they, when their water broke, they heard a little bit of a pop. Um, but we thought my water broke with Knox and went in and it wasn't my water. And so I feel like I'm more skeptical between that and the fact that I have contractions at the end of pregnancy constantly. Um, I 
and usually I'm like, I don't think I'm in labor. But for whatever reason, I sat there, I waited, not, no water came out or anything. So then I stood up, nothing came out. So I went to the bathroom and I peed, went to the kitchen, made some cereal, and then some water came out. And it wasn't like a ton, a ton, but enough that I was like, okay, that makes me feel like that's probably my water. And I went out and told Matt, I think that my water probably just broke. Um, and we called my mom at 10, 10 p.m. And the plan was to take the kids over to her house, but for whatever reason, we were like, just come over here. And, which I'm kind of surprised I called her because normally I think I would be questioning whether it actually was my water and wait to have a few gushes, but I called her after the first one. So I think I just had a gut feeling or something. Um, and so then after I called her, I did keep having the gushes like coming out, just especially when I've like bent down, did different things. So we had the hospital bag packed, but we had some things that, you know, we needed like our toothbrush and stuff like that, that we needed to grab. So we got around, we grabbed that. Um, and then you called my mom at what, like 10 30 probably. Yeah. And because when I first called her, I hadn't even timed the contractions yet. I had noticed all day they were like five to seven minutes apart. Water broke. Noticed that I felt like they were getting closer, but had, hadn't even looked at the clock yet. So then by 10.30, I had started looking at the clock, and they were two minutes apart. And definitely getting stronger um, pretty quickly. Which I thought, <clears throat> sorry, I thought she had already told her mom that. So when I called her mom, I said, hey, where are you at? And she's like, I'm leaving right here in a second. Okay, well, her water broke and her contractions are two minutes apart. And she goes, Oh, well, she didn't tell me that. Because I hadn't timed it yet. But I thought she had. And I was just like, Okay, well, you need to hurry. She's like, Okay, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> and so she starts <laughs> heading to the house. And the kids were already asleep, thankfully. So yeah. they were just like sleeping away. So we could just grab our stuff. So we, I mean, grabbed the last few things we needed pretty quickly and we're just really just waiting around. For her to get there. So she doesn't live she very can... far. She lives like 15, 20 minutes away. Yeah. So she got to her house and we actually switched cars because then she could have the car seats in our van. Um, and so we loaded up the car with our stuff mm -hmm. really quickly. And I filmed a clip and I, I put it in here and it was 11 o'clock when we left On our house. And we got to... Thankfully, the hospital's not that far away. So yeah. she said that her contractions were two-ish minutes apart. And they were, I had I think probably four less. or five of them on the way to the hospital, which I've never had contractions like that in the mm -hmm. car before. And they were definitely like where, I mean, I could talk through them, but they were definitely getting more painful and it was not very fun to have them in the car. Um, but I was still walking, doing all the things. So in the parking garage, I didn't even, t so the other thing is with my other two deliveries, I was induced, but the end of my deliveries were very fast both times. With our first, I only pushed for seven minutes before she was born, and with Knox, our second, I pushed for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And with Knox, I went from an eight to him being born in less than 10 minutes. So the end is very, very fast. My body will like start pushing on its own. I didn't have an epidural with either of them either. I was induced, but didn't have an epidural, so I know like the urge to push and all of those things in my body very much does that, where it's like, okay, baby's coming now. I haven't had my doctor for now three of my births. Um, we had a different doctor that was on call or something with Camden and then with Knox we had a resident. Anyways, and so I know that the end of my births are very fast, but I've never gone into labor naturally to know how fast the beginning would be. Mm -hmm. So when we got into the parking garage, I didn't tell Matt this at the time, but I felt like I had like an urge to poop or something. And obviously a lot of times you feel that before you start pushing, but I didn't feel like my body will start pushing on its own, like just bearing down, like I can't do anything about it. I did not feel that yet, but it made me nervous because I was like, I don't know if this is gonna go really quickly. So I started walking a lot quicker. We walked through the mm -hmm. hospital um because you have to it was like 11 o'clock at night so you had to call they had to let you into the different parts we get up to labor and delivery at 11 11 because they have it written down and she was born at 11 20. so then yeah. matt walks up and talks oh well, i guess you can explain. oh yeah so into this point you know we we kind of rush around but you know before we even left kind of told her mom like oh he's just freaking out for nothing blah blah, blah and all this kind of stuff it's like no i knew we needed to go to the hospital but i did not think it would be that quick i was rushing because like i said i was still talking through the contractions i was walking through them like mm -hmm. she was she she seemed normal but yeah. it just happened so fast and so we pulled in and like she said we went through security and everything we get it up to the floor and i said um okay my wife is in labor we think that the baby's gonna come any moment. 
Well, at that point, we didn't think I was pushing yet. No, but I did say like, hey, the baby's coming. Yeah. And she's like, okay, we well, do you have ID and insurance? And I, I forgot that. get this to this moment, I understand. There are a lot of people that probably go in there and they're probably freaking out to some level and it's probably not actually happening right then, right? I have to believe that at some point. Um, but then at the same point, it's like, you want to de-stress the parents to a good degree. Anyway, so we hand I hand her the uh, insurance because I left Cayenne, the, all the stuff in the van. I didn't feel like we had time. And Cayenne's like, you forgot my ID. I was like, oh, it's okay, we can get it later. <laughs> So, hand her the insurance, and uh, she goes, okay, well, I'm gonna need you to fill out this form, this form, this form. And I was like, seriously, you're gonna make me fill out forms before you check out my wife? And she goes, that's just protocol. Okay, so I start filling everything out, and so I hand it to her. Them out, and I'm still having the contractions, and at yeah. that point, I was still like walking through them. I wasn't making any noise or anything at that point. I had a few of them. I was just kind of pacing the waiting room. No one else was out there. Mm -hmm. And he was filling them out. And she's not really talking at this moment, so I know it's And game I'm usually time. pretty quiet, like, until the very end. Like, yep. I usually am kind of laboring on my own, just breathing through it. So I was doing that, mm -hmm. and then probably a few contractions into him filling out the paperwork, I started needing to grab the side of, like, the, a sink that they had there. So mm -hmm. I was grabbing that, and I, I can tell it was just escalating. And so at some point, I think you can see in the video, I tell him, like, this is this is not good. I think, I think things are happening or something yeah. like that. And I was like trying to re like be there, but then also trying to record because that was something that we wanted. And so I'm like, well, I don't know how much, I mean, I need to interfere obviously to some degree. So and yeah, I handed the paperwork. Yeah, and she's like, okay, we'll get somebody. She just sat there. Well, then she grabbed on the sink and then I was like, okay, you guys got to get something going on here. I said, cause this baby's coming. Yeah, I probably had one or two contractions where I was still pretty quiet holding onto the sink, but wasn't really making noise. And then but you said I started to me, moaning. this is not good. Yeah, I said this that because I could feel that it was getting a lot more intense. Yeah, and then once I said that, I said, just to let you know, she's had other pregnancies. And once she starts, the baby's come in like 10 minutes or 7 minutes or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> then she got serious, got up. They got the other people out, and they're like, hey, "Would you like a wheelchair?" I was like, "We don't got time for that. Like, this baby's coming. Yeah, like, she was you don't like understand." Me, but I couldn't even like. I don't think I could have sat down at that moment, and I couldn't concentrate on whether I wanted to. I couldn't even decide that in the moment. Mm -hmm. and so it's yeah, like, I'm, I'm telling that. you, so this like, baby okay, is go. coming. So I'm like walking, and my body had. I think my body started to bear down when I was in the waiting room, mm -hmm. like probably right when the nurse came out. And you have to imagine, they probably thought I was like, this dude's crazy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So I wasn't Somebody. like pushing yet, but my body was doing like what it did with the other ones where it's like bearing down without me even doing anything. And so I'm like walking through that down the hallway to the room and we get to the room and they already had the resident in there, thankfully. Yeah. And so. But then I go put the camera down, Cayenne comes up and she's behind me. As soon as she walks through, like 20 people flood in. And if you, I don't There's know so if you're people, gonna yeah. show the video or not, but you can see like yeah, in the in the background, you just see, like if you just pay attention to that and not pay attention to what's going on with Kyan, you can see just people just coming in, just flying in. Yeah. And so they're getting their stuff ready because obviously this is out of nowhere, whatever. Yeah, they were taking me seriously, but I don't think yeah, they, they took us seriously. fast it would be. Right, right when we walked in the back and I was like, hey, this is like happening. They all just kind of flooded in. They were yeah. they they then were like, okay, yeah, this is happening. So uh, as soon as she got to the bed, she yeah, I touched wasn't it. In the bed. I, yeah, I like put my hands on the side it, of the bed. She bared down. And yeah, I could tell the baby was coming. Like, and the nurse is like, can I take your pants off? Can I take your pants off? I was like, yes, the baby's coming. Take her pants off. Which I didn't even hear her say that at yeah, all. Obviously, because she's you know pushing out a human. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, they start taking, I think several people were like trying to take my pants off. Yeah, and one person and was, was trying to talk to her. My body was literally her pushing And ask her questions about the pregnancy and are there problems with the baby, are there problems with the mama. So I'm trying to answer those because she, obviously she's occupied. And yeah. um, once they get her pants down, her, to, head, was her head was there. <laughs> and they're, they're like, grab her head, grab her head. But you know, 
I'm sure with liability is probably why, but nobody grabbed her head because nobody had gloves on. Yeah, they were trying to get their gloves on. And they're mm -hmm. like, grab her head, grab her head. So I was just like, yeah, grab her head. And I was like, all right, I'll grab her head. And <laughs> so you can see him kind of in the video. I, He's blocky, obviously. It was just so fast. It was so fast. I put the camera down. I was so blocking most of it. So you can't see a lot, but you can but hear, you can hear everything. So he grabbed her head. And then Kyan literally then pushed, pushed one, one more time, time and, and we pulled her out. Came out. So and then I was still standing up because I was just like, I wasn't squatting or anything. I was standing, mm -hmm. delivered her. They said it was less than a minute. And you can see it from the timestamps on the video too, that we were in the room yeah. when she was like fully born and out. And so they put her, I think on the bed and told me to grab her. So yeah. I was standing up, still holding her. So they like helped me sit down on the bed and they didn't have anything done. So they were like trying to put an IV in. They blew one of my veins, which I mean, my veins are kind of destroyed from all the HG anyway, so that happens pretty often. But so then they had to try and put in another IV, and they gave me a Pitocin shot mm -hmm. at the same time, and I was like delivering the placenta. It was like everything all at once, and we're like, what just happened? Like yeah, it was so quick. It was surreal how quick it went. Yeah, and then and they're also asking me like five million questions because to kind of know my history, things with the pregnancy, like all of that. Yeah, because they didn't have so any time, obviously, they, to they do don't that. Know. Yeah. So trying to answer the questions. To see if I tore, which I did not tear, thankfully. She's in said, shock. Yeah, I mean, I knew it would be fast, like the other ones probably, but. Uh, not as soon as we walked in a room fast. Yeah, not nine minutes after we got to the hospital, and it was only an hour. Like I literally had no idea I was in labor until my water broke. Never question so a dad's minutes. intuition. I'm just saying. I knew things. So I, I really kind don't of. know if it was like sometimes sometimes question it. precipitous labor like they say where it's really really fast, or if I was in labor all day and just didn't know because also my other two labors I was on pitocin, um, and I didn't I didn't have epidurals with all three of them so I felt everything but you know pitocin makes them stronger mm -hmm. and more consistent and everything so I don't know if that's why. And because I have the patrimal labor, you know, I just didn't know because they were asking me, hey, did you have contractions? Well, yeah, I did all day, but they didn't feel any different. So I, I have no idea. But either way, it was very, very fast. So then, yeah, yeah. they checked me. I did not tear, um, which I tore with my first, but not with Knox either. And um, yeah, they got me like cleaned up. We did skin, to, I think we did skin. To, well, I still had on like my sweatshirt that I walked in with, so it had stuff all over it. So at some point they helped me take that off um, so that I could do skin to skin with her and feed her um, and all that. And I still didn't have a gown on or I mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> so then eventually they, you know, after we had more than the hour, they did all of her like tests and weighed her and she was seven pounds, eight ounces. So I was 37 weeks and five days, almost six days when I delivered her. And Camden, I delivered at 37 weeks exactly. Knox was 37 and two, so she made it three days further. And she was seven pounds, eight ounces, which was the exact mm -hmm. same weight that Camden was. She was 18 and a quarter inches long, which is our shortest baby. Um, and I think yeah. they said that was one of the shortest times anybody's been in the delivery room. I mean, she was one minute from being born in the waiting room. So yep. if we would have waited longer or if I would have, like, I think it was just a God thing, honestly, that everything, one thing after another. I, the fact that I called my mom that quickly is pretty surprising with the other things that I've had. I normally wouldn't call her that quickly. No, um, God made and if her I wouldn't, drive there, <laughs> get there on time. That's good too. Yeah, yeah and Matt was pushing. And I was going to stop too. at Quick Trip, honestly. Yeah, because if I would have waited, because I, I so really tired. did think I had time. I mean, I remember even saying like, because I have a different doctor this time, and we were really hoping he could be at the birth. Yeah. Because we haven't had our doctor He's the other two times, which is not the end of the world. Like in the moment, I don't care who catches the baby, but we really like him. And his office is like five minutes from the hospital. So he had told me during my pregnancy, you know, I might be more likely to make it because the hospital's so close. Well, it was 11 o'clock at night. So I told Matt, like, unless I'm in labor for like 10 hours, he's you not know, gonna be here. he's if it goes as fast as the other ones, he's probably not going to make it. Little did we know that we'd have a baby at that point, what, like probably 10 like minutes later, because we were right by the hospital <clears> when <throat> I said that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was when she very first fast. told, woke me up, I was like, yeah, you're going to have to wait because I'm way too tired for this right now. <laughs> yeah, he literally said that. <laughs> yeah. And you'd have a baby. Probably at that point when I woke you up, it was like an hour or so. Later. You guys are going to criticize me, but I was very tired. You don't understand. <laughs> But it was such an answer to prayer. It was quick. I mean, it Gosh. all went very smooth. We were both very healthy. 
I mean, it was obviously very intense. Um, all of the end of my births, though, are very intense because they are so fast. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I don't know. It was, yeah, it was pretty perfect in that way. So it was a lot to process, and I think we were in shock for a little while that she was actually here. I'm still in shock. <coughs> so is she. Because also I didn't have to be induced, and I don't know. No, one. I don't know if I've shared much of that one here. Oh, goodness. So. Um, I don't know if I've shared much of that on here, but they were watching because I had preeclampsia and then the hypertension. And so we kind of thought that we'd have a baby by probably at right around 37 weeks like the other two. And my blood pressure had been going up for about a week and a half. Um, and it was very, very borderline for being diagnosed. So we were having to watch it. I was having some other symptoms and stuff, but um, not enough to be diagnosed yet. And so we didn't know if I was going to stay pregnant. Like much, I mean, I already was more pregnant than I had ever been. And um, obviously, I'd never gone into labor naturally. So, anyways, that's the gist of it. We just wanted to share all the details with you. So, thanks for all the prayers and support. And we're so excited that she's here. The long amount of details that we had. Just, yeah. It was so long. I know. That's why you watch a birth vlog, though, is to get the details. So, it's I feel like interesting. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, sorry there's not as much footage as we had planned for there to be, but... It was probably the most dramatic, definitely the most dramatic birth. I mean, they're all dramatic at the end, but definitely the most dramatic overall, I would say. Yeah. So. It was pretty cool. It was oh. pretty fast. Yeah. And it was awesome because she has hard labor or pregnancies. Yeah. So but my birth, the birth was, was pretty easy. So I guess, I don't know. I didn't do it. So. Yeah. My body does not necessarily do easy. pregnancy well, but it does birth quite well. So, which I'm very grateful for. So. Yeah, we're gonna go snuggle her now, but that's the worst story. Bye, friends. <laughs>